Welcome to the Zone Boxing Show presented by AutoZone. The DBS boys are back together, which is good. It's always good for us to be back together. Is you it? know it's a big show. <laughs> Don't get it. You know it's a big show. We're starting we're already. Together. First of all, I saw you trying to look already. taller. Yeah. I just saw that. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> One second. But it's good to be with you guys always. again, right? Like, and it's good to Ryan, see Ryan Garcia back in action as well. Yeah, I mean, I think Ryan, uh, the fact that he his last loss was such a big high-profile fight against one of the best fighters in the world yeah. in Tank Davis, there's a lot of pressure. I know people don't think, oh, this is Ryan. Just, Duarte is a dangerous opponent, so there's pressure in him because many people don't know Duarte, right? We know how dangerous he is yeah. a, a, as fight guys, right? Yeah, yeah. So he has pressure to the, uh, you know, the casual audience to knock this guy out because they don't know who he is. But he has to actually do that in the sport to stay where he is. There, there can't be a subpar performance of Ryan Garcia against Duarte. There's a lot of pressure on this young man. I think a casual fans, yeah. With casual fans, you can't have a subpar performance. Even in boxing, I mean. I mean. Are you okay with a subpar performance by Ryan when Garcia? When you say subpar, you just mean no knockout. That's what it no, sounds no, like no, he no. was trying I, to say. I, I mean, Sub, you don't want no fighter that says that they're good or we feel like it's good to have a subpar performance anyway. Right. You know what I mean? But but if you're just talking about no knockout, no, I, I can see your decision as long as it's a good fight. And of course. I see changes between him and Derek James. But I think the pressure is always there because you're a star. The stars should always have pressure. And, and that's yeah. just, it is what it is. Is there more of giving him a bit of a, a bit of a leeway to have a subpar performance because he's coming off a defeat, because he has now got oh. a new trainer? So right. no, isn't there a bit more, okay, you don't have to look super special? Absolutely no. not. No, no, never. <laughs> because you're Ryan Garcia, never. think about it, right? Look, Ryan obviously had a tough loss against Tank, but yeah. he still was Ryan Garcia. He's still one of the biggest names in the sport. And let's not act like Ryan wasn't knocking everybody out and he had some decent opponents on his list. We expect a lot from him, right? right? And though Duarte is a tough fighter, what are we thinking? We're thinking Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. We're thinking Ryan Garcia, Tiafimo Lopez. We're thinking Ryan Garcia and those guys. So I don't want to no, see no, nothing no, less. No, what, you're right. No, I'm not okay with that. No, what I'm trying to say though, but we see all the fighters, all the top fighters. I mean, we saw Shakur Stevenson a couple of weeks ago have a, yeah. a subpar performance. Tiafimo Lopez for me is the best 140 pound out there. Before that, though, against Sandar Martin, Sandar Martin, subpar. But you didn't expect that, and you weren't okay with it. No, I wasn't okay with it. But I think is there shouldn't there be allowance for there's it? All, there's, there's always an allowance. Loss. There's always an allowance, yeah. and I think that knockouts, you know, cover a multitude of sins. You yeah. forget, you right. forget. So sure. that's what we need now, because even though he just lost against one of the best fighters in the world, that kind of gets chalked up in a subpar performance. You know, you, you're lost. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you lost. It wasn't even a back and forth in your loss. You lost. So he needs, you can't have two of those in a row. Yeah, but the thing that, the fact that he was at 135 and there were people were saying that that weight was hard for Ryan to make, we saw Ryan, he's a big guy, right? Yeah. So I think that's also adding something to the mix. Like, all right, now you're at 140, right? You're comfortable now, right? So you're stronger now, you can punch harder. So that's also gonna be talked about. That's why there's no room for subpar because you have the new trainer, you're at the weight class that you're most comfortable in, and you're one of the biggest stars in the sport. Agreed, agreed, there's a lot yeah. of pressure on him. Uh, let's talk about training camps and trainers. Obviously, he's got Derek James now. And what we see with boxing nowadays, guys, I think you're seeing almost like super camps, mm. and then you're seeing these fighters that have just kind of that one-on-one -on -one relationship with a trainer, like almost like GGG Abel Sanchez, right? You're just you two. Yeah. He's now gone to a super camp, a camp that has so many superstars. Good or bad? That, that's a great question, Ade, and a lot of people have been talking about that. Does he have too many big names in his camp? Can he divide the time properly for each star? Because when you talk about, this guy doesn't have a few world champions, he has a few world stars. Yeah, superstars. In, <laughs> superstars yeah. in Spence, in, in Ryan Garcia, in Anthony Joshua, who's a star in a whole nother Jamel country. Charlo, Frank Jamel Martin, Charlo. It, there's it, loads it, in there, that camp. There's too many. But, you know, Derek always says, listen, these guys don't train at the same time in a the gym. They mm. train different times, but there's, they, you know, the traveling and going here it's and forth, it, it's a it, lot. Pl it plays a part. I guess we'll get all those questions answered. And I said earlier there's a lot of pressure on Ryan, but I think he's going to live up to the hype and score a big knockout victory. Yeah, I mean, the answer to that is it's, it's always depends on the trainer, you know, because Freddie Roach was that guy at one time. Yeah. He had the stars. Everybody no, wanted to go to Freddie Roach. Not really, yeah, no. one big star. No, well, everyone wanted well, to go there. Everyone everybody wanted to go to, wanted wanted to, go to him. Kid Chocolate, like, everybody wanted to go to him, you know, so he was that guy. And it's also, it's just about, Freddie Roach just happened to be somebody who has no life but boxing, <laughs> you know, so it really depends. Not as is Derek, I don't think. 
Well, well, that's, well let me get to that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Land, like, you caught on. He, caught, he caught on to what I was going to say. We don't really know, but it just appears that Derek is so boxing centered mm. that he's going to divide up his time properly. But it really just depends on how he divides his time. Yeah, we it. focus so much on Ryan Garcia, right? So, as you guys say, he's the superstar. Oscar Duarte comes in to this fight with. 11 straight knockouts. Yeah. He's coming just to win the lottery. Right. right. You beat Ryan Garcia, then your next fight, whether it be the rematch or anyone else at 140, you're Sheesh. making that money. And, and I watched Sheesh. him fight, and I, I, I don't want to make this comparison, like don't be so literal with it, but I, I I see Canelo vibes with Duarte, right? Because of the way he stalks, you know, Canelo's that great left hook to the body. Yeah. I've seen Duarte land great left hooks to the body and come up top. He's a stalker. Fast hands, not as fast as Ryan, but he can punch. You just mentioned it, 11 straight knockouts. He's going to get some shots in there, yeah. right? Ryan's going to have to deal with some adversity, no question about it. A lot to gain, obviously. He has the world to gain, but he has a very vicious young fighter who obviously has a chip on his shoulder right now yeah. in front I'll, of I'll him. I'll say two chips. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll say two, right. two chips. I like that. Yeah, um, I, I like that comparison. I would say more like Triple G only because, you know, Canelo's so crafty with his right. stalk, especially right. nowadays. Right. But the old Canelo, perfect. Yeah, but yeah. I think more like Triple G. He doesn't have the one-punch knockout power, but he breaks, his, he breaks his opponents down. But he's at 135, he's that guy. Ryan it was a big 135. Ryan is a big 140. Yes. Ryan's a Is he going to be is Duarte going to be you know? Is Duarte going to be able to get in on a guy who hits as hard and as fast as Ryan with that style coming forward? You know? Is there is there a way in which Ryan Garcia and all fighters do it can maybe overlook the guy in front of him when you do have yeah. him going back and forth for Shakur Stevenson, yeah, Teofimo yeah. Lopez offer whether that be true or not there's right. guys out there. Would it, can would you it, overlook an Oscar Duarte a little bit? First of all, with a trainer like Derek James, no, right? This guy's a serious boxing mind, right? So he's not going to allow Ryan in the gym to overlook this guy. They're training mm. for this guy. So when mm. you have that type of circle around you, Eddie, they, they don't allow you to overlook anybody. Now, mentally, does he is he looking past him? I don't think so. I think he is looking forward at the big fights at 140 yeah. and even 147, right, yeah. which he told us. But I think that his nucleus is never going to allow him to look overlook a guy like that. Look, you... Did you ever see him fight? The guy can fight. There's no way that Ron is overlooking this guy. You know why he's not overlooking him? Because you don't overlook your next guy when you come off a loss. Right. That's just not happening. Right. Your, your job is now to redeem yourself. And especially when you're battling against your, your promoter, like Bernard Hopkins and Oscar De La Hoya, you got to prove to them. So you're focused, laser focused, saying, I'm going to make this guy look bad. So the to toxicity show these guys is not I'm. messing his focus up. Not the focus. <laughs> I don't know about the fight. Yeah. Mm. All of a sudden, the 140-pound division, I think the deepest division Oof. in boxing. Devin Haney just like that. jumped up to it. Just like that, right? Ryan Garcia as well. Who's the king of the 140-pound division? The lineal oh. champion. Who is the, <laughs> the, the lineal, lineal, lineal champion? Lopez, Tiafima obviously. Lopez. Let's, do, let's not do that, you know, because right. it's like Devin Haney didn't get the props when he was at 135 and he right. had all the belts. We're talking about Tank and everybody. The lineal champion is Tiafima Lopez. Probably should have had all the straps. Who cares about the politics? He's the guy. Not but Regis, you're right. Not no Regis, point. the WBC champion. Nope. I nope. mean, I mean, he's you just talking about a guy that beat IBF Josh Taylor, that looks beat good. Regis Pro. Regis Pro, great, great fight yeah. ahead of him against. Uh, that he's man. one of great the top fighter, guys, but he's the guy that beat him, right? And, and Teofimo made. I don't want to say easy work, but he really. Oh, he he did. He made easy he work did. of Josh Taylor. Oh, of a right? guy who was on the pound it's for funny, pound. Listen, it's one funny time. you say that. People will say one second. There's a guy in England who made easy work of Josh Taylor as well. That's a guy called Jack Cattrall. No, no not, not that, like that wasn't easy work. Not like Tiafimo. That wasn't. Lopez. I think he won. He beat. I think he beat. That wasn't easy work. He might have won the fight. But it was a Tiafimo destroyed Josh Taylor. He should be undisputed. Final one, very very quickly. If Ryan Garcia does get past Oscar Duarte and everyone thinks he does, who do you want to see him in next with? Obviously, it has to be either Teofimo Lopez. Devin Haney's at 140, right? We'll see what he does against Regis Progre. Maybe Regis wins that fight. And maybe we see Ryan against Regis. So many You fights. said it. Deep, deep, deep division, division. Deep division. Scared. I don't give a damn who he fights at 140. One of those big names, though. Let me throw a wild card go in on, here. Go. What about Javante Davis at 140? Ooh. Why not? Well, the rematch Why at not? 140. Because... Wait, was an issue at one thirty? Why not? Maybe after one or two big wins. It still, it still will be the biggest fight though. One those thing two, we do those know, guys are huge. Ryan Garcia has options. Yeah. I don't care how good you are. If you don't have options, you gotta win. Get him, man. You gotta win. But you gotta win. Yeah, you're right. The pick of the litter. Look, we'll see you guys on Saturday. Big one, Ryan Garcia versus Oscar Duarte. DBS boys alongside AutoZone. Check it out.